When you came here, was it five years ago or whatever right. it was, did you, were you thinking that that was going to be able to happen or was there any concern yeah. for you that maybe people were starting to think of you as a pawn to be kind of moved around and... Right. Well, I, I don't know. Coming from D.C., um, I think there's a lot of charades that went on with me going to mm -hmm. New York, coming back here and then and staying here, but I wanted to come here all along. You know, that was, I came to the front office in D.C. and said I wanted to be in, in Salt Lake. Um, I knew it was going to be a challenge for sure that the team wasn't great, yeah. um, but I knew um, it was it was going to be built, and, and, and obviously it's built now, and, and we're succeeding. But um, I, I never want to be the person to be thought of as, as the person that gets moved around club to club, you know. Right. And I want this to be my home. I, I you know this is my team, and, and um, we've built this you know from the ground up. I feel like even from you know when we talk about the stadium and, and the players and the front office. So mm -hmm. um, I, I like it here, and. and um, I hope I'm not somebody that uh, that has a reputation of getting moved around and, and wants to be moved around because because I want to be here. Yeah, that was probably certainly not not now. Yeah. I just wondered back then whether how confident were you that you were going to be able to make such a long term right. career yeah. out of it's, it's soccer? Because in DC I, I was I was the man there, you know, and, and then I lost my spot and you know I need another opportunity. Oh, you know, burrito. sometimes you need to move burrito. on, and, and this was an opportunity for me to come burrito. here, and, and it was a great opportunity. It ended up being a good one for me and my family and and. I knew I could always play in this league, and I knew I knew that you know if I had another opportunity, another chance to start in a team, that uh, you know we could do something special. And, and you know Jason and Garth done a good job of bringing players in and, and making this a competitive team. Looking back, when uh, we traded here, then <laughs> traded back, and then hey. what was your relationship relationship like with Coach Arena at the time? Because it seemed like he was kind of maybe even doing you a favor yeah. by trading uh, you back. Was that did you communicate about yeah. that? And, I mean, my agent has a, a good relationship with. with Coach Arena and he coached him at Virginia and and I obviously have a good relationship with Arena and, and when I got there I was I was training with with uh, New York and, and Florida and then there's still some ifs and busts if I was going to stay with the team or if there's another team that's going to come along and, and obviously the opportunity came back came to, to come back here and I was in, getting my physical in New York City and he called me and asked me if I wanted to come back to Real and, and that's when I was like yeah no brainer and then I said all right well you're not dressing today get, get your stuff together you're you're going back and that's when I called my wife, who was in an interview in New York, and then told her, "Don't, don't take that job." <laughs> oh, she was in the midst of an interview. Yeah, How yeah. She actually it? just got done with it because I called her. She didn't answer because she was finishing up her interview. And she said, "Well, I just got the job here," and she ended up moving over here. So it was good. Kind of ironic then that in the shootout against LA, you end up beating him. He trades you to the right. team, and then you end up beating him. Had exactly. you thought about that at all? Yeah. No. No. Um, Bruce is, I mean, he's a top class guy, and, and I mean, he's respected all, all around this this country and in the national team and, and, and in MLS. But you, when you cross those lines, there's no kind of you know, friendships, you know. At the end of the game, I think every time I play Bruce, I make it, you know, certain to go up to him and give him a handshake. And he's done great with the clubs. I mean, look at LA now. I mean, they're they're striving, and he flipped that club. You know, even the first couple of games, it was like, oh, Bruce really didn't change his team, and, and he did. I mean, they're they're a they're they're a great team, and, and I think right now one of the best teams in the league. How important is it to you to climb those charts? You know, the fifth guy to get to mm -hmm. 100 wins, and you're not all that far behind from the top of the list, I don't think. To be honest, I, I I don't, you know, I don't look at the stats, and, and when they come up, it's because you know they come up on little like milestones, like 100 wins, and 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 then that's when I you know see in the papers or you know oh well he's fifth in shutouts or whatever I am, and that's that's when I see it. I don't really look at the stats. I don't see where I'm at, and um, I think that's what makes good goalkeepers. You don't pay attention to that, you just pay attention on your game. What is it like around the team this year where you're so, it, it, the team seems to have been so in control of itself and its destiny, you know, getting wins, getting the points, and up until this point, even last year, it seemed like I was always chasing, always chasing. Is there a different feeling? Yeah, I even noticed that. Absolutely. I, I think that <clears throat> while there's always pressure to perform, I think that when you control your your own fate, uh, things are a bit different. You, you can uh, play with a little bit uh, less stress on the field, mm -hmm. and I think that um, gives us a, a little bit more opportunity to create chances and, and be a better team. Defensively, you guys have been so strong in general, but particularly the last few games. More you guys, or is it more Nick? I mean, and by you guys, I mean the other defenders. I think it's a, it's it's a, it's always a group effort. I think Nick's come up with some some huge saves, and he, he's he's always been uh, amazing in goal for us. Uh, I think also we, we've had. Uh, 
uh, really good control of games. I think we've had possession for long stretches of the games. I think we've been in good balance when we attack to make sure we don't get counterattacked. And I think that uh, it's been a really good group effort. So uh, I think it would just, I would have to say it's a combination of things. Is Nick any different than he was last year, this year? Uh, no, he's, he's still, uh, for, for me, the, the number one goalkeeper in the league. Uh, he's, uh, talks a lot, uh, great leader in the locker room, uh, makes, comes up with big saves, always in, in the right spots, and always looking to, to improve, and he knows, as well as anybody else, that how, how, um, it's been a long time. <coughs> how quickly things can change. So I think that uh, uh, we're, we're all in, enjoying yeah. so far this ride, and we want to make sure that it continues. Well, I'm trying to remember, the, your first stint in the league yeah, right. was yeah. mid-early 2000s, is that right? Yeah. Two, three, four, something like 2003. that? 2003, yeah. At that time, how much did you know about Nick? I don't think he played on the same teams. You were in Colorado, right? Mm -hmm. He was in DC. Yeah. And did you could you did you have any thought that he would become the keeper that not only is good at, at any particular moment, but you know he's got 100 career wins now and all these shutouts, climbing career charts and stuff. You know, I, I think everybody in the league's always known how good he is, and I think it uh, was just a matter of time uh, for him to get to 100 wins, and mm -hmm. and he's just got so much experience, and he, like I said, he's just. Uh, He's so easy to play with. He makes makes things easy for us in the back, and uh, I think that's really contributed to our success. and And I think his success in his career. And I don't think he takes anything for granted. He's been in D.C. He's been in New York. He's been in Miami. Um, you know, he's, he's he's been on good teams and bad teams. And I think he just brings a wealth of experience to our team. We're expecting out of Chicago. Well, they're, they're a very quick team. They've got Marco Papa, Patrick Niarco. Um, Mike Banner, those guys can fly, and then they've got, also got a guy named Brian McBride who's really not a bad player in the air. So uh, it's, it's obviously going to be another one of those games where we've got to keep track of their dangerous guys and make sure that uh, when we get a chance to score, we're going to put them away. What do, what do you think about uh, the fire, and, and what do you see in them? That... I think it's uh, a very, very difficult task in this for Reasons. First and foremost, it's a difficult place to play. They have a fantastic uh, crowd there. It's very vocal and supportive of their team. And then on top of that, they have some very, very good attacking players. Uh, they play in a formation that that is uh, could can be difficult for us to deal with. Uh, with their players that run out of midfield, so it'll be a, a I think a great test for us. I'm looking forward to it. They have good attacking players, but you still have names. Yep. We have uh, Nick, and we have good defenders, and we have a team that's bought into defending as a unit, and they're all going to have to, especially in our midfield, because the way they play, we're going to have to pick up runners, and we have to stay with them and be fully committed to things in order to continue on with our clean sheets. When Nick first came here, did you envision that he would uh, be such a, a mainstay in the league over a long haul? Um, yes, actually, because uh, the very first year that, that I was coaching, he, he was playing very, very well making big, big saves, and then in the second year he was our team MVP and was called upon week in and week out to make fantastic saves for us. I think what we've seen over the last two years is it's been less and less of those fantastic saves that we've been having to call upon him to, to make. And so obviously statistically that helps him, but one thing that's never changed is how good he's been with his feet out of the back and to be such a possession-oriented team. It's very, very nice to have a goalkeeper that, that's really calm in the ball and help, help you keep possession, to be honest. It's kind of our extra attacker back there a lot of times. I know back when he first came here, you were a, a player and the whole thing that happened with Garlic. How relieved were you, just as the captain of the team, to know that you didn't have to put a rookie keeper in there and you'd be yeah. able to rely on yeah, somebody? Yeah, you know, as a, young, as a young coach and as an older player <laughs> in that transition, I did not want to have to play a, a young goalkeeper. And I think that that, you know, Unfortunately for Chris Sides, that was evidenced in how much he was used here. It's, it's always my belief as a player and still my belief as a coach that uh, if there's one spot on the field you really need some better leadership, it's in, it's in the goal.